Welcome back to Quantitative Analysis in Anthropology. We're on topic four now, and we're going to be spending this topic talking about correlation. Correlation is one of the most important uh, statistics or statistical set of exercises that you're going to have. You're going to use correlation of various kinds. Uh, lots and lots of times in anthropology, you're going to read about it all the time. You'll probably use it in projects. Uh, it's a very important topic. It's actually a relatively simple one also, and that's a good thing. We're going to start off talking about how we visualize correlation. Again, I want to reemphasize in this course, I'm looking to give you a sense of statistics conceptually and visually, and I think that doesn't come together any better than in correlation. So we're going to begin with scatter plots. Scatter plots are the basic tools that we use to visualize correlation. And in my opinion, they're one of the most visually appealing and, and telling, information-rich uh, visualizations of statistics. So we, in a scatter plot, are looking at two variables at the same time and trying to see whether there is an association or a relationship between the two variables. You've seen this plot in an earlier lesson. This is stature by age in the Boaz immigrant data set. And we talked about this as having actually a, a mistake sort or a concatenation in it where we have the adults that have stopped growing, so they're all kind of up here, and then children that are growing. And so we have this relationship going up and then leveling off. This we would call a curvilinear relationship. And while that's a very important kind of relationship, it's complex to deal with in um, statistics, so we are not going to do that in this course. We're not going to talk about curvilinear relationships. We'll talk about it in passing, but we're not going to examine it too closely. Um, when we're talking about last time, uh, or in, the, in an earlier topic, I should say, um, we were talking about uh, changing, manipulating arithmetically variables. This is one of those places where you could manipulate this uh, by taking logarithm and you could even this out, and then you could do some analysis on it. But that also shows you the danger of doing that, because here you'd be bringing together two different, uh, essentially two different populations, adults and children. And um, that theoretically and pragmatically would be problematic. It's actually an important lesson, because we need to have that conceptual understanding of statistics before we apply them, simply because we can throw numbers into R or into a statistical uh, equation and we'll get results. It's something that's commonly said, garbage in, garbage out. We can put garbage in, but in this case we're putting in a conceptually uh, incorrect or theoretically incorrect set of data where two, essentially two data sets are concatenated. And we can get results out of that, but they're not really meaningful. And that's a concept that we're going to deal with a lot in this course from here on. The idea that, yeah, you can get numbers and you can get sometimes what appear to be very meaningful numbers, but we have to ask, do those really tell us anything? Are they meaningful? And as we read literature in anthropology and elsewhere, in the newspaper, uh, in other courses, we want to ask the same thing. Sure, these numbers look impressive, but do they mean anything? All right, scatter plots. So here are two scatter plots. This is age. Uh, and it's probably hard to read this. I apologize for that. But this is age up to 21 in the immigrant data set and stature. So if we go back to this image, this is these people. And I'm just plotting those. 
And you can see that growth here, how people grow up over time. This is a little bit different. This is the adults. So this essentially cuts this off here and puts it into two different scatter plots. And you can see here that there's no relationship. There's just a sort of mass of points. That's what we're looking for when we visualize correlation. What we're looking for is some kind of linear relationship and or curvilinear because that tells us something, but what we're really looking for is a linear relationship between two variables because that tells us that there is a direct association or a direct um, relationship between two such that as one goes up, the other goes up, or we can have a negative relationship where one goes up and the other goes down. So those are two different kinds of relationships. That's what we're looking for, those linear relationships, because what the linear relationships tell us is that one variable and the other are acting together. And they may be causally connected, one's causing the other, or there could be an, a third or fourth or fifth underlying factor that's uh, making those two be related together. So here, there's an obvious underlying factor that relates these two, right? And that is growing up. That as you grow up, you get bigger. So as age goes up, size goes up. One of the things to note here also in the scatter plot is this individual that's an outlier. That individual is 14 years old and is apparently really, really, really tiny. Outliers are a problem in doing correlation because they affect what we'll talk about in the next uh, lesson, the correlation coefficient, which is how we measure the extent to which we have a linear relationship. But in a scatter plot, they're actually really interesting because we can look at these and ask, what's going on with this case? And in this case, that's probably an error. We've talked about error. And I would say this is probably a measurement error or an observer error using a measurement. It's probably not an instrument error because if you're using some kind of scale, it would be unusual for it to be this much off. But a measurement error or an observer error might be that this person's 14 months old and they were recorded as 14 years old. Or, in terms of height, this person made some kind of mistake in terms of recording where the decimal goes or something else. So this is probably just some kind of uh, recording error. Uh, and, and in doing analysis, we would throw that out. It's an important point there for critiques of statistical analyses. Um, this sounds like we're manipulating the data to make it create patterns we want. But if we have obvious outliers, these clearly are errors. They're observer errors, measurement errors, instrument errors of some kind. And leaving them in the analysis doesn't allow us really to look at what's going on. So these kinds of outliers we get rid of. We'd probably get rid of these also because these are people that appear to be under 100 centimeters tall or under 3 feet tall uh, at 40, 50, 60. These are probably errors. Um, some of these, though, those we might take out, but a lot of these are, are part of the variation and we leave them in. But when we get really dramatic changes, those we would leave out. Okay, here's a linear relationship. This, say, well, that's a linear relationship, but it's flat. Yeah, but think about that. What that's showing us is that age, as age goes up, height stays the same. So that's not really a very interesting relationship. Just as one changes, the other stays the same. Well, that's that's not showing us any kind of 
of association there that might be meaningful that says the two change together and that's really what correlation is looking at do the two change together in some regular way that we can understand ok there i mentioned this before there are two basic forms or of correlation or patterns that are that are made one is positive as one variable goes up the other variable goes up. So here again we have age and stature. As one goes up, the other goes up, and we can easily understand that pattern because as people get older, they grow up. This is a, another pattern. It's a little bit different, and what this is showing is immigration year from 1880 to 1910 by age. Immigration year by age. So if the immigration year is 1880, when Boaz and his researchers went out to measure, take measurements of their crania and size and stature and those things, the people who immigrated in 1880 were old, older. They were about 45, 50. Tend to, tend to be. That's probably what the average in there and if we look at this average mean as average is pretty good there because it's a that looks like a fairly normal distribution only a couple outliers out here but similar outliers there if we move on we look at the people who immigrated in 1910 there's a lot of very young people there so this these data are being um, taken in 1910 so it's not surprising some babies immigrated over. You can't, you're not going to stay a baby over the course of 30 years, right? So this is artificial, but we, what we have here is a negative relationship. As the immigration year goes up, age tends to go down, right? Age tends to go down as immigration year goes up. That's a negative relationship. This one really is artificial, but the BOAS data doesn't have any negative relationships in the other interval variables, so I just sort of made this one up. I could have used another data set, but this, this actually shows a pretty reasonable pattern. So we have positive relationships as one goes up, the other goes up. Negative relationships as one goes up, the other goes down. The Scatter plot works best when we have continuous interval data. We can do scatter plots with other kinds of data, but they actually don't work so well. And so here is a dichotomous variable. That means it has two forms, yes and no, male, female, up, down, just two categories. And here we have males and females and showing stature. Again, this is an obvious relationship because women tend to be smaller than men in stature, and we can see that here. This would be the mean, and this again is a fairly normal distribution. We have an outlier here, and we have some outliers here. Those again are probably measurement errors. We cut those off and look. Those are pretty normal. So if we look at the mean here, and the mean here, this one's lower than this one. So we can use this to visualize those data, and what we would have in this case would be a negative relationship. Men, as you, although it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it would say as you get more female, you get shorter. Um, I, I suppose that does make sense to some extent, although it's dichotomous. In this case, gender as we know today is fluid, but in 1910, you're a man or you're a woman. Okay, this is, as we've seen before, a box plot, or a box and whisker plot. For dichotomous variables, if we want to visualize correlations, this is a much better way to do it. Because here it's really obvious, right? This looks terrible. We can't see very well what's going on here. Here it's, it's clear we have that negative relationship. And we can see the distribution 
Uh, we can see the outliers down here. And again, I'm sorry, you might not be able to see them that well, but it's part of trying to show you things on screen. But this is the median and the 50% are, are quite clear. So for dichotomous variables, <coughs> and we will come across them, box plot is a much better way to visualize uh, the correlation. And when we look at ordinal variables, we get the same thing. And this is very important because we are going to be dealing as anthropologists with ordinal variables all the time. Uh, in fact, most of the data sets that we use or are going to look at have ordinal data. A lot of survey work uses scales, uh, uh, none some much, strongly disagree to strongly agree. Those are all ordinal, and, and so we're going to deal with ordinal variables quite a lot. And a scatter plot of ordinal variables looks terrible. You can't see anything in here. There are some ways to improve this by what's called binning, and you make where there are places where there are larger numbers of cases, you make them bigger, or you make them different colors, or you make them brighter. Even when you do that, scatter plot of two ordinal variables looks terrible. Even a scatter plot with an ordinal variable and an interval variable doesn't look so good because you get these lines anyway from the ordinal variable because it only has discrete categories. There's nothing in between. So a much better way of looking at ordinal variables is the box plot also. And here what we can see as a correlation between the density of population. This is from another uh, data set. There are not good ordinal variables in the BOAS data set. There's dichotomous variables um, and then nominal variables and, and the stature and cephalic index and other things. So this is from a data set that we will be using in the course on cultural complexity. This is the, the extent to which agriculture is relied upon. We've seen that once. And then this is the density of population. And you would assume that there would be a positive correlation here because you'd think as agriculture becomes more uh, prevalent or it's more relied upon, that population density would increase. We can't see that in the scatter plot, but we can in a box plot. And you can see it go up and then level off once you get really high population density. And that's when you get agriculture, you start getting really high population density. Uh, less dependence on agriculture, uh, you have much lower population density. So we have a positive relationship here, except that, remember, what is this? This is curvilinear. So correlation in, in this case, looking at curvilinear relationships is a little complicated. We can correct for this taking a natural log or a, a logarithmic scale for, um, for one of the two variables and it will even it out. Um, but we can also do analyses of curvilinear variables, but we aren't going to do that in this course. It's too complicated. Okay, so for ordinal variables, like dichotomous variables, box plots are a better way to look at correlations. For interval variables, scatter plots. And, and as I said, there, I love scatter plots. They tell you so much visually about the data. Okay, that's all for today. We'll see you later.